This is Carl Andron of Andron Software Company with a video on calibrating Loran to GPS conversions. This video will go through the steps necessary to perform this operation. So first we'll go to CMARKS and open it up and I have loaded in a file which is also on my website that I took off of Brevard County, Florida with some calibration data using a Cytex Loran and a GPX a GPS machine. This is very important that you have both uh, a Loran and a GPS reading. Now, stuff on the internet may have been already converted and indeed if it had been converted by a Loran many years ago it's likely to be very inaccurate. Thinking about the Loran system we have that the Loran points are done with the Loran signals and the Loran lines look like this in this particular area you'll see that they're skewed and if you look at the big picture they're hyperbolous a uh, uh, geometric uh, uh, function so these are the 7980Y or Yankee numbers and these are the 7980Z or Zulu uh, lines now note that in this case the lines are about the same difference, distance apart uh, one way or the other. So this is a very good geometry for Loran. Now the other thing is that uh, when I'm out there and let's say I found this point number one here. Now point number one was taken very close to the 43900 line. Uh, and therefore is very good. Now if I took a point which is sort of out in the middle between two lines on uh, <coughs> well for example uh, this one is also between this line this is the 61900 and the 61800. So you have to keep in mind that the number if just moved a little bit would jump from the one number to the other number and therefore could be uh, in error uh, by a, an amount. You would really like to have taken your calibration points right on where the line was most solidly represented uh, where these cross and what I mean is where they cross in a very fine geometry of a tenth of a microsecond apart these are of course uh, 50 microseconds apart here so this isn't uh, exactly where you take the point. You like take the point uh, right in the middle between where it will change to one higher or one lower in both lines. That would be the very best place. In lieu of doing that just take a whole bunch of them some of which are uh, good in one respect and lousy in another respect. So uh, to start the calibration process we go over to the tools menu and we select calibrate conversions. Okay. Now we have uh, some choices here the calibration method. You will want to use the first one uh, as uh, appropriate. You could use the government DMA tables, the defense mapping agency tables or you could use a single ASF value for the entire uh, file. Now if you were using a GPS with a Phantom Loran you would put in an offset and that would be uh, appropriate for the entire area. Uh, <clears throat> but it wouldn't be as good as what CMARKS has which has a new number every 10 minutes of arc in both directions. So you get a better result using CMARKS than with your Phantom Loran. And you can examine ASF tables 
uh, I will look here for where are we we're at 81 degrees west and 28 or the high, next highest number would be 29 uh, north and we can examine that table by clicking here we want to make sure that we're on the 7980 chain southeast US in this case and we don't want to be on 81 and 29 so we scroll down here where you see 81 and 29 Oop. gotta get it 81 and 29 okay so we see that the Y slave would have numbers somewhere in the 2.13 to 2.74 now this is an already calibrated tables here if we went to the government tables we would see that well it's missing stuff over land that's sensible and these are the numbers you'd get for the Y and for the Z and in this case they're almost the same if we take the calibrated tables that uh, <coughs> CMARCS has uh, as you buy it is 2.56 or so for Z and 2.13 or so for Y and as you can see it just changes here it's two and a quarter down to 1.94 of course some of this is over land but uh, doesn't matter <coughs> so what we would do uh, I will undo previous calibrations and use data only from this file to do it and it will perform the calibration so it goes through and does the calibration uh, in this case there's not too many points so it's done now it is a report and we'll view the report so this is the re uh, report for this particular file I, the calibration area is based on the points in the file how, how far north and south and east and west they are this is an important no number here the 7980 Y lines per tenth of a microsecond which is their finest resolution change every 55 feet and the Z lines change every 83 feet so you can't <clears throat> even if you had perfect calibration you could be off half of one of these numbers in one direction or the other now the, on the first pass of calibration and there'll be multiple passes if some crappy data was uh, brought up in other words uh, ASF values are greater than 5 uh, so this shows that the mean ASF value for the Y slave is 2.24 and the mean value for the Z slave is 2.50 and the variance is fairly small so what I do then is take each of the points and calculate a distance from what the uh, GPS said it was uh, based on the conversion so these conversions look pretty nice uh, average of 38 feet you may see uh, some areas where you've got uh, 100 and something feet or but if you see two or three or four hundred feet then that's getting to be sloppy and these are at a particular bearing and you could look at well how much off could the TD1 have been in order to get this kind of error and same thing for uh, the TD2 and these are the numbers that are waypoints that created this calibration so if we close that form and say hey let's plot the error distribution it might be indicative of things it'll tell you that it's going to drop the current file from memory and use the calibration or data instead and it's going to show the calibrations points by distributing about uh, the center lat lawn as a reference point so let's see what this looks like here is the center of this plot and we would like to see a random distribution in all directions from this if we see a line along here somewhere that would be indicating that there's some bias to it so what we see here is a fairly random distribution of points around this center okay and this is the center of the points in this particular file 
So, uh, we now have it calibrated, and if we go back to display with TDs and lat lawn, oops. Oh, this is the calibration error plot. We've got to go back to the calibration file instead. So, um, again, this data is already in the calibration of the CMARCS program as you buy it, as is uh, the effects of many other calibration uh, files sent to me by various uh, customers. Now, you might want to know uh, how it is you go about creating calibration spots, assuming that you didn't, back in the days, capture Loran and GPS simultaneously while you were visiting various spots. Uh, indeed, if you can find specific places using the converted readings, and getting a good GPS reading on that, then you have calibration spots. So let's say that we knew where exactly the gun shoe wreck was, and we, we can go into the, uh, <clears throat> into the uh, file and click on the latitude to try to change it. Well, it's going to tell you that it's a computed latitude. If you want to make it a calibration point, then you press yes. This brings up a form for entering the calibration stuff. Now, you want to find out what was the source of the latitude and longitude. If it was uh, low quality hearsay, for example, uh, you get a, a low caliber quality measure. If it was a WASP GPS, you get a high uh, probability. So you can now go in and change either the Loran or the GPS. Chances are you will be changing the GPS because that's what you just measured. So let's say you go in there and you change this to uh, some other number that you just found on your GPS and you change this likewise to a, a, a different number and you say this is now a calibration point. So how do we know that? We look up gun shoe here and there is this CH or chain column. The chain used to be three which was a Loran no, chain. Chain three is a W and Z pair. Okay, which is suitable for use off Key West, Florida. So now it has a leading nine. A nine indicates that it's a very high quality calibration point and can be used for your calibration. Now you'd want to do a bunch of these as I explained before. If you only have one calibration point, it could be that the Loran number was picked just before it was going to change the next higher or lower number, which would automatically throw in a fairly significant uh, bias into the calibration. The more you have, the more likely that randomly uh, it'll convert to the best calibration you can have. So that is how you add calibration data to your capture and uh, let from which you can then do a calibration and get better accuracy on your conversions. Thank you.